perfect. Hey guys, welcome back to Bait and Tackle. And today we are gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna get a little creative and we're gonna try to make a new musky jig. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this do it no roll sinker mold. And we're gonna start off small uh, form factor first. We're gonna start off with a one ounce. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this sinker. I'm gonna try to drill eye holes onto it with a drill press out in the garage. And then we can put some decent size eyes on these sinkers. And then we're gonna use a wire former and we're gonna make a through wire through that. And then I'm gonna somehow put some kind of an attachment with a hook on it so that we can probably mount a seven inch curly tail grub on the back of it. So that's what we're gonna try to do today. We're gonna make an attempt at this. So hopefully we're successful. But once we get that one done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna step up the scales. And I'm thinking this would be a good option for doing the 12 inch grub that Epic Bait Molds has as well. So stay tuned. Let's see what we can come up with. So I wanna show you guys what we got working with here. And there are some pins that come with this mold, but I also ordered some extra ones. I ordered an extra uh, set of them in case I wanted to do extra. So we're gonna go ahead today and we're gonna pour all four of these just so I can get a size, kind of a size variance of these, but we're gonna concentrate on the one ounce first, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and put these hole pins in here and then we're gonna go ahead and pour all four of these. So the lead's heating up right now, might be a minute, but I just wanted to show you this mold. So it's just got a through wire that goes through the actual sinker so that'll be that'll be for us and it's going to be a little bit sloppy because this is a pretty thick gauge wire on here but we're gonna we'll try to beef up i think i've got some pretty thick wire maybe some, some 0.5 or 0 0.05 i'm not sure i gotta look look and see what i've got but we should be able to come up with something pretty cool so as you can see i still have the mold just kind of heating up right now on the top so i'm going to take that off it should be nice and hot now if you just do a little little touch test yeah oh yeah she's nice and hot Okay, I'm just gonna drain a little bit of the little bit of the lead out. I don't know if you can see this very good or not. See lead coming out there. So I'm gonna just drain a little bit more out of there, plop the excess back in there. And then this this uh, this lead pad I have see, tends, tends to just drip a little bit, quite a bit. So I use this little catch pot underneath it just to catch the lead, the hot lead. So we are ready to go got all these heated up. I've got all my pins in set off to the side. So we are going to go ahead and we are going to drop that lead inside there. So here we go. There's one. There's two. There's three. four. Now if you notice that each one of those took a little bit longer, I'm, this is the smallest one and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. So I'm going to put my catch pan back underneath because it's dripping again. And I got to adjust my pin here once in a while just to make it so that it stops dripping. That's better. And just pick up the little, little slackers everywhere that are dripped down. Be careful not to burn yourself. You probably should be using gloves. I just don't because I'm crazy. And let me bring you back over here. And let's see if we can get a nice little, see if we can get a nice little view of me opening these up. Okay, there we go. Yep, 
and all of them poured exactly the way I want them. Now these are extremely hot, so I'm just gonna be really careful. I'll drop them down on the table, just roll them over to make sure that there's no holes. Nope, no holes, no imperfections. First time shooting a mold, usually it goes pretty quick, pretty easy. Same thing with the one, all good. So again, we're gonna try the one, I believe, with that seven, that seven, uh, seven inch curly tail. So let me get these cleaned up. We'll remove the sprues, pull the pins out, and we will get to making some wire next. Okay guys, so very carefully, I'm gonna take this drill press and I've got a 12 millimeter uh, bit in there. It's a Forstner bit to do like an eye cavity. And what I'm gonna do is turn this on and we're gonna do an eye cavity on both sides of this lead weight. Always wear safety glasses. I'm just gonna do a light, light spot that we can put an eye cavity into. That will actually do it right there. So I'm gonna flip it over. Be very careful when you're doing this. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm using the channel locks just to hold the lead in place. So very, see that's what I'm saying, you gotta be very careful. I'm going to the very bottom of the one. Just gonna go down a little bit, enough to make a nice thing, and then what I'll do is I'll, that's it right there. So what I did was I just did enough to make an eye cavity on both sides. 12 millimeter on both sides. So we're gonna just take this back into the bait shop. I've got some stuff to sand up a little bit of that, get rid of some of the burrs. We've got a little bit of burrs there, see them? So we'll just take that in and burr, deburr that a little bit. And I feel like one side's a little bit deeper than the other, but I think we'll be okay. And maybe I'll hit that side one more time, just a little bit, just to just to make sure that we got enough cavity there. So let me get this back where you guys can see it again. Yeah, perfect. Just wanted to take a little bit more off. So there you go. Eye cavity both sides. And like I said, we'll take it inside, deburr it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this, these burrs off and I'm just going to take a file. And this is what I like to use for a lot of my lead stuff. And we're just going to hit, we're just going to hit the edge of that, the burrs to try to get them off. And you could even probably take like a, a razor knife like this and probably just very carefully cut away from yourself if you can. Just very carefully go around the outside edge just to knock down any of the burring that you're gonna get. Now keep in mind that this is gonna be an eye cavity, so we don't want it too messed up, but we want it clean enough to where, um, clean enough to where we got an edge there. So after we paint, hopefully the paint's not gonna fill it in too much but it's gonna fill it in enough to where um, we can put the eye on there and it shouldn't be an issue, okay? So, <clears throat> I knocked down all the edges on it. I get a nice clean eye hole on both sides, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back on to one of our little, one of our little pins here and I'd like to get it all the way through if I can. Let's see if I can get this knocked through here just by tapping it. There we go. I think it's going through. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so just enough for it to go through 
And what we're going to do is that way it'll keep that hole clean. Okay. So we're going to take this. We're going to take it over here to our heat gun, which is what we normally do. It's our normal process. Let me get you tilted up here. We're going to heat. We're going to heat this mammoth thing up. Just trying to get you adjusted here for right height. We're going to heat this thing up. I'm just going to hold on to this pin. Heat it up nice and good. We've also got a color picked out. I am using black neon. Okay, got my black neon. Made a mess, of course, but we're going to heat this up nice and hot. Probably pretty hot. Yep, it's already pretty hot. And we're going to take it over here to our fluid bed, and we're going to dip it in. And we're probably going to dip it twice just because I want a nice, good coating on it. Then we'll take it back over to the heat again. And we'll heat it back up and get it nice and shiny. Now my plan here is to take this, get it all painted nice. We'll, we'll throw it in the um, toaster oven at three... Was it? Three something, three twenty, whatever the normal is baking that you do for the powder paint. Okay. Okay, I think that'll about do it right there. That's perfect. So check this out, guys. Black neon. It's black with some red in it. There you go. See the red? There's the red flake. Okay. Nice color. Nice. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bake this. Let me shut this stuff off. We're going to bake this for about 20 minutes, 320-ish, okay? And then what we're going to do is after that gets done baking and setting up, we are going to put this, we're going to put eyeballs on this, then we'll probably dip this in a UV clear coat to seal it up real good. And then we'll take it off and put it on our... Okay guys, so what I'm thinking, here it is, painted, cured, ready to go. Um, and I found some eyeballs over here next door. I think I'm gonna use these. I had some cheaper ones, but I think I'd pass on those. I got some more expensive ones here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a dot of glue and get these glued up. Now this is a... Uh, 12 millimeter eye, like I said earlier, we did a 12 millimeter hole, so it should fit perfect, which it does. So I'm going to put that on there. Then I'm going to flip it over, put the other eyeball on. And I actually did that the wrong way because I wanted the dot, I wanted the point to go down, not, not towards the teardrop because this is going to be crap I'm trying to get this into place and it's not cooperating here we go which is going to be clear coated anyway so i'm not really too worried about it but i wanted to want to get it in that cavity in the right direction there we go okay so there's that i want it that way so i got to flip this one around if i can yep i can Trying not to get my fingers glued to it, which I just did. But again, like I said, it's going to be clear coated. So this is going to be the front of the, of the bait up here. We're going to have an eye. It's going to be an eye on a wire there. Okay, I'm not sure if we're going to put a bead in there or not. Maybe. I haven't really thought about that right now. So we might put a bead in there. 
I'm not sure about a bead down here. And then I found these other things we're going to put, and I'll show, show you later when we put this thing together. Um, I think it's going to look pretty cool. So we've got the eyes on. Let's let the glue set up for, for a minute or two, and then we'll go ahead and clear coat it. And I've got some new clear coat I'm going to try as well. And then we're going to pop these into the... We're going to pop this into a UV uh, tank that I have and let it cure. So let me let me go get that. All right, guys. So I found this on Amazon. It is a just UV resin. And it comes in a bottle like this with a dropper top. So it's got that too. We are going to be brushing this on. So I don't plan on... Um, I don't plan on using that too much, but let's just read the directions together real quick, just so I can go through this with you. Hardening times vary on, on the UV light that you use. Okay, it says right here, uh, six to nine watts will take a little bit longer, like four to five minutes. Uh, UV lamp that's 36 watts, which I think mine are pretty high, so it says two to four minutes, so it's not going to take long to cure. Um, sunlight, it says seven to ten, so you could, you could put this outside in the sun or sunlight on a cloudy day, 15 and 20 minutes. So you could put this outside even on a cloudy day and it should should uh, cure very well. Um, I'll sit little, little nomenclature here. It says it may change depending on the condition of the light, the thickness of the work or other working environments. So depending on how thick you put a coat on there, all that kind of good stuff, we don't know. Caution, do not swallow, do not get in your eyes, blah, blah, blah. This may have some odor especially under the UV lamp. There are no uh, after curing. Do not mix too many other accessories, colorants, mica powder, etc. It will affect the curing time. So it sounds like this is ready to go. It doesn't say anything about shaking it or anything like that. So I think we're okay. So what I'm going to do here is I've got a brush that I use for putting UV on. We'll use that. It's a bigger brush that I've got here. And we're going to go ahead get this ready but first thing i'm gonna do is get my uv tank ready so this is my uv tank right here and i'm gonna show you i'm gonna plug this in here real quick try not to shock myself and there's my lights these are 30 watt bulbs and i have a little hanging wire that i put across here so i'll hang that down in there and it may not i don't know if it's going to get down in there enough I'm not sure yet. I may have to use, I was using this before, a little mold, just a little mold on the bottom. And then I was taking one of my, my painting things and setting it down in there, which I think that's going to be the way to go. All right, that's good. So get that set up in there. So when it hangs, it'll be right here in the middle of the UV. Okay, so we got that ready. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing UV'd up. So again, I'm just going to pop the top off this, and I'm going to just paint it on with a brush. I am not going to squeeze it on. Looks like this has got one of those little, uh, little like rubber seal type stuff on there, so I'm just gonna use a knife to get that cut off. But this is just on Amazon. I can't remember how much it is. I want to say less than 20 bucks. I can't remember. But we're going to try this. This is the first time I'm going to try this product. So we're going to go ahead and get some of that on there. And we're going to go ahead. And I just dripped some, which I probably didn't want to do. And we're just going to go ahead and UV clear coat the entire bait. And I'm going to get... This little spot I just dropped on there. Hopefully there's not any junk in it. But I'm just going to go ahead and clear coat over that eyeball. Make sure that there's no um, drips, drops. Make sure there's no, no, no extra. Just going to wipe off the excess on top of that. Okay. I like it. Looks great. Sealed in the bait really well. I think I'm just going to hit this one spot around the eye. I'm going to hit it with just a little bit more clear coat. Just because I want a little bit extra around that eyeball. So I think we're good. Got it nice and clear coated. 
So now I'm going to go drop this in the tank. The only problem I have with this is that it's not going to turn the way I want it to. But I'm gonna just going to try to put it in the middle there. Let's see it. Just let it cure. Let's see what that does. Okay. Okay, let's talk about this rig. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, I'm pretty sure this is a, I wanna say 0 0.050 thickness, wire thickness, so it's pretty thick. Um, it already has a uh, made loop at the end. We're gonna twist that into, into shape on the wire bender first. Then I'm thinking we're gonna slip our lead head on, our um, ounce one, which is still curing right now in the UV thing. So it'll be this, first, which this is a little bit bigger than the one we're actually going to use. Then we're, th gonna, we're thinking about, I'm thinking about what else, to, what else to use. I found these little worm weights that you can put a skirt on and it's something from Barlow's. It is a brass worm weight with skirt collar and this is a one eighth ounce. So it's not going to add too much weight and I'm going to flip it over the other way. Normally I think you'd, you'd make it like that, a bullet weight like that with the with the longer end that way, but I'm going to flip it over and do it the other way. So it's short with the collar because I don't care about the bottom part. So I'm thinking about doing it like this, where it's those two on here. And I'm still not sure about a bead in between. I'm thinking I want to kind of keep it kind of transparent with no beads in it. Because I, I don't know if I really, don't necessarily want this stuff to spin, but, but you get what I'm saying. So it'll be the loop, the weight, with the eyeballs on it, and then this for the skirt. And then at the end, I'll put a loop, I'll tie a loop at the end of this. So there'll be a little bit of a, a little bit of a give in between here. So I'm, I'm not sure, maybe I will put some beads in there, I'm not sure, but there'll be a little bit of a give probably up here. And then um, I'll put a loop at the end here, and then we'll put a six out hook. And I can't remember the number of this hook, I'll have to dig it out but a six out hook off the back with a, with a screw lock on it. And that'll screw lock into this um, seven inch grub. And then you can, what you can do is screw lock it into it and bury this in the body, just like a, just like a, um, a swim bait almost. And then that way when it rides, it'll ride nice and smooth. And I'm thinking at the end of that, instead of this twist, instead of this whole thing twisting, I'm going to have it solid the loop at the end, I'm going to put just, I'm just going to put a split ring. I'm going to put a split ring on the end of that. Then that way um, it'll stay solid. It won't twist. It won't spin. I don't want it to spin. I don't, this is not, you know, this is not something that's, this is not a, a blade or anything that's going to spin. I want it to stay solid because I want it to ride one direction. But this may alter, this may twist a little bit. There's really not a way for me to keep that, that straight. So I'm just going to go ahead and we are going, I could glue it in place, I guess. I'm not sure, but it's, it's going to have a little bit of, of flexibility to it. So this might spin a little bit, which might be cool. I don't know. So I'm going to try it as is. And then, um, after we try it a few times, then I'll probably see about, um, gluing it in place or whatever. So I think that's what we're going to do. So I'm waiting for the head to come out. We'll go ahead and make this first loop on the, on the uh, wire bender and then we'll continue on. Okay, so on this one, we just need a nice tight bend. So there's that bend already that you are already ready to go. Put it on there, put it in the thing, push this down nice and tight, keep that on there. And this is just gonna twist. I don't have to worry about any hooks or anything. I'm just gonna keep it nice and tight and I'm gonna twist it. And you really only need to twist it one way. Okay, looks good so far. I'm just gonna keep that nice tight bend. Okay, I think we're good. Yep, yep, did exactly the way I wanted it to. Could have been a little bit tighter, but that's okay. If I can get this off of here, it's being a little stubborn. There we go. Okay, so nice, nice tight little wire bend. I wish I could have gotten those a little bit tighter, but that's okay. That's, that'll work. And then we'll go ahead and put our put our pieces parts together, and then we got to do one on the other end. All right, guys, let's see. Let me get this microphone put on here. We got the head on here. Came out great. It's got a nice UV coating on it. I do like that UV coating already. Came out awesome. 
Here's that little skirt collar thing I was talking about. I'm gonna use a short end towards that guy. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a little uh, circle here, a circle connection just like up here, down here underneath. And then we'll put, like I said, a uh, split ring and a hook on there. And we'll see how that rolls. And maybe I'll be, I don't know if I'll have footage on there this time for how this works, but maybe I'll, I'll like do a short video and put it on Instagram or something like that when I get a chance to test this out. But let's go ahead and do this wire bend. This time we're going to leave a little bit of distance on that wire. So I don't know if you can see me down here. This is where you do your bending for the circle. So I'm going to leave it a little bit farther out. I'm going to go ahead and do the bend. bend and then I'm going to flip it over. Bend it back just a little bit. So I got that V. Okay, so you want to do that, right? So you get that. And then this time I'm actually going to cut off. I'm going to cut off a majority of what we're using here. So then that way we're not using too much wire. So I'm going to be left with that. Okay. And now we're going to bring it up here. And flip it over here to the right direction here. Okay. And we're going to try this again. This time, I'm going to try not to go super tight like I did last time. I get, you got to let it move a little bit. There we go. 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 Okay. I think we're good. Now, that kind of left a little bit too much space than I'd like. I'm not sure if I can get that to scrunch up a little bit, maybe with some pliers. Probably not. No, but that's okay. So this is what we got. We got this head with that below it. So let me see if I can find some split rings. I'm pretty sure I've got some here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 10 piece. Not sure what the weight is on these, but this should be, it's a little small. But it's probably all I've got. Oh, here we go. Split ring, 18-pound test. I want something a little bit stronger than that, though. I think that's all I've got. It's either that bigger 18 or the smaller one. I think I like the smaller one better. I think it's going to be a little bit more durable. So let's go ahead and get one of these out. And the one thing we're going to have to do here is make up a skirt real quick. And I'm just going to do a quick red and black skirt. And we're going to go ahead and put it on the bottom of this. Oop. Came off. That's the only thing I don't like about these really tiny split rings. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it on there good. There we go. Let's see if I can get it on there and stay on there. Yep, I think we're good. There it goes. Yeah, that's not gonna work. All right, let's get another split ring. Let's get a bigger one. Let's put it on the hook first. I'm just gonna have to use this lightweight 18. Trials and tribulations, something new, something different, something cool, but you got to practice, right? All right, these split rings are a lot bigger, so let's put it on the hook first, and keep in mind that you want to keep the keeper, the wire keeper there, you want to keep that towards the hook. Let me see if I can get this open enough to, oh, I don't like that hook eye either. That hook guy is pretty big. Like I said, I may have to. Nope, there goes that split ring. It just shot across the room. So I think I got a couple of them. All right, let's try this one more time. Get it on there. Come on. Oh, 
Come on. Okay, so while I'm getting it on here, I'm going to try to get this one on there as well. There we go. Then that way I can do them both at the same time. Probably what I should have done before. Okay, it's on. So, this is the rig. And I'm just going to leave that split ring on there for now. I probably will cut it off at some point here. But I'm just going to leave it on there. Maybe it'll just clang around, make some noise. So here's the rig. It's got nice head. So that'll, I don't know if that's going to spin. It probably will. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to test it in the water. See how it goes. And actually, this is not the way I want it to be. I want it to actually be. Yeah, I don't want it to run sideways, so I think I actually want to turn that back to straight and straight. So I was wrong on the, the circle eyes. You want them to be straight in line with each other. Okay. That way the hook will ride straight. That's what we want right there. That's pretty cool. I kind of like that. So let's leave that alone for now. Let's go ahead and make up a quick skirt. Get this put on here. And then I'll put it together and I'll put a I will put a, get my O-rings here. I will put a uh, seven inch grub on here, just to give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. And that's what I'm gonna field test it with, is that grub. So let me get my rubber, my O-ring and collar pliers here. I'm gonna actually go ahead and I'm not going to do one side red, one side black. I'm going to actually mix them together so that there's kind of a 50-50 here. There we go. Okay. Four tabs, four full tabs. That's what I always like to do for skirts. All my skirts. Get it in the middle. Get my scissors. Cut the end tabs off. Cut the end tabs off. Bring this down a little bit. Want to be able to make it so that it's a little bit floppy there. That's good. And then I probably should have put this on before I put the hook on and all that crap because now I'm going to have to go through all of this to get this skirt on. So remember that for next time. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the I'm going to take the uh, bait keeper off for right now to get it out of the way, and then I'll put it back on after I get the collar, or after I get the skirt up there. So there's the skirt. It's coming up. Coming up here. So we go up the hook, up over our circle thing here, which might be a little difficult. No, oh, it's going good. It's going good. And then up on to... The skirt thing. Okay, so it rode up a little bit. I probably should have probably should have dropped that down a little bit. Actually, that's that's pretty good. Okay, so that's it. Looks good. So now I'm gonna go ahead. This is what it's gonna look like in the water. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put that screw lock back on. Bait keeper screw lock here. Put that back the way it was on the hook eye. And then I'm going to put a seven inch grub on here. Seven inch grub. I'm going to screw him in. Let's see where I can screw him in, where he's going to be the right side up. What I want is I want the hook to be up through 
with the curly tail like this. Yep, just like that. And what I'm going to do here is just like a like an offset EWWG type thing. I'm going to put it through the body of the grub most of the way with it just protruding out the other side. Then that way it's still grub, but it's got a hook there so the fish will come over the back and bite down and get hooked just like that. So what do we think of the final product? Still got a couple of skirt things I got to work out, but what do we think, guys? Let me get you backed up here a little bit, get you set up a little bit more here. What do we think? What do we think? We think it's dumb. We think it's cool. What do we think? Musky type jig. It's kind of hard to, I'll take some pictures of this at some point too. I have it laid down so it's, show you the curly tail and the head. So that's a two ounce head with 12 millimeter eyes. And I'm thinking I can make some bigger ones too. But we'll see how it runs. I've got a funny feeling this is gonna spin. I gotta find a way to glue that into place if I need to. And I may do that. But I, like I said, I'm gonna field test it first. But there you go, something new, something creative. Using the Do It Molds No Roll Sinker Mold. We were able to make a head for a musky jig, musky bait type thing. I think it's pretty cool. I like it. I might add some different things to it, some kind of spinners or something at some point. I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but I think, I think that's pretty dang sweet. So I'll take some pictures of this and we'll, uh, I'll have it on here on the video. We're gonna wrap it up right now anyway. And I think it came out pretty sweet guys. All right, so I hope you guys liked that video. Something really cool, something different, but a, a musky bait made from scratch. Did the wire harness. Use one of these things from Barlow's. I'll put that in the, the comment section below on what it is. But I think that came out very cool. That could be a sweet bait. It's two ounces. Again, I can make them with roll sinkers up to three ounces. That's the biggest one that's in that mold. And it was all with using this do it no roll sinker mold so use that you can take it out to your drill press or whatever and even if you don't have a drill press you could probably get away with using a drill but you got to be very careful using forstner bits drill into that lead a little bit just to get a nice eye socket and that i mean that's that's beautiful that came out great look at that it's fantastic love the color love the red and black I'll probably do some more colors now, just since I've got a good way of going forward. We'll make some adjustments, make some changes. Hopefully I can, I can keep you guys in the loop when I do it. But what an awesome, awesome bait. So thank you guys so much for watching. We're coming up on uh, 1500 subscribers. I'm not sure when this video is gonna come out before or after that, but uh, let's keep rolling guys. I mean, I'm gonna do another big giveaway at 1500 and I can't thank y'all enough. This has been fantastic. I love making baits, trying different things, making new things. It's just been fun. I've got some other stuff up my sleeve too that I'm gonna put out here at some point soon. Um, some future videos coming up I'm pretty excited about. So thank you guys so much for watching and remember, keep on baiting.